Good afternoon. Hi, it's Annabelle. I'm so happy you're here. Let's just kick it off with books. This month I read two books, although I have three more chapters to go with this one, and I'm really loving the structure of doing one nonfiction and one fiction because it helps me escape while a nonfiction I feel like is more challenging so I digest it throughout the day. The first book I'm gonna talk about is my absolute favorite, Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I'm very grateful to the viewer who recommended this book to me back in March. Flow is all about how to apply the optimal experience attitude into your everyday moment. I can't even begin to list how many amazing principles this book has sandwiched within the 10 chapters. Behind this bookmark, there are just notes, like the annotations and the footnotes. This was published 1990, by the way, by Harper and Rowe. And to brief really quickly, it explores a happy state of mind called flow, the feeling of complete engagement in a creative or playful activity. Psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's famous investigations of optimal experience have revealed that what makes an experience genuinely satisfying is a state of consciousness. One of the biggest principles that sticks with me still is the distinguishing factor between what is pleasure and what is enjoyment. And maybe especially in my environment growing up, we deem success and maybe conflate it with living a life full of pleasure where one should use as little energy as possible to earn as much money as possible and to maximize as much pleasure as possible. But really what enjoyment offers us is so much more. It's engagement, growth. I can go on forever, but maybe I'll just do a deep dive into psychology books that I've enjoyed or self-help books that I've enjoyed. So I can talk a lot more about that or just about how I apply flow to my life. The second book is What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. I found this at Savers. If I found this new at a bookstore, I wouldn't have been super into it. I can't spoil what happens because it does break into a little bit of fantasy. This, compared to the last two fiction books, has not an ounce of humor in it. So it's just a very different tone altogether. It's a historic, historical fiction book. However, though, I really like immersing myself and learning about different cultures altogether. The story is based in the early 2000s and reminisces a lot in the 1920s when Ireland had their political uprisings and the wars. Although I can't relate to it, I wonder if people of Irish descent would find it more enchanting to, for example, understand the Gaelic mention or understand some of the myths that they mention and use as analogies and stuff. My favorite thing is the romance. <laughs> I'm kind of invested in that. It's so eloquent, <laughs> the romantic scene. It's one of those where I'm kind of, I had to edge towards the end. Whereas a lot of the fiction books I read, I, I crawl until the middle and then bam, I'm done with the rest of it in one sitting. It's getting dark. Uh, I want to talk about some clothing brands as well that I found really notable this month. For one, I get a lot of questions on my Instagram story, where is this purse from? I have no idea what this brand is. I got it at Savers for almost $7. I'm really attracted to the butterscotch. It has become my essential purse because for the longest time I used those really narrow ones like the 90s style but it doesn't hold a lot of stuff, especially my vlog camera. I need a wallet. I only had a really bulky wallet, so I've been shoving all of my cards in the pocket of this purse, so it's almost like the purse itself is my wallet, and I can't switch a purse without having to empty everything and go through the pain of that. It's a whole mess in here. You see, I have my scrunchie. Also thrifted these gloves. These are like nice fabric gloves from probably the 60s or 50s or something. I think now that when I wear it out, people must think it's because of sanitary reasons, COVID, but it's also an accessory that I will continue to don in the future too. At the very bottom of my purse, I also have this nice, it's called Fresh F, Energizing Mist. You never know when you're just in the car so hot, your mask has been just sweaty underneath. <gasps> No, you just assume that's your spot, but this is my spot. 
Come over here, Darcy. Next, I want to mention a couple of brands that I discovered, and the first is Passé Noir. They are a small woman-owned sustainable business, and it's made to order. They make everything from scrap fabrics, so it's zero waste. Under my sweater, I have this really cute autumnal skirt on. Yes, honey. And I really like the big buttons on the side here. There's also a like a slit for for the leg. So that was the one piece that I chose and they gifted it to me. So it literally fits me perfectly. They even asked how long I wanted it. So you could even go shorter if that's your style or longer. I opted for like a midi length. If I bought it from a mass produced store, you kind of just get what you get. They wanted to emphasize that the women who make their clothes, they're single mothers based in North Macedonia. It's so crucial for them. The average income for their community is less than $300 a month. So you know exactly who you're supporting. And the next brand I want to talk about is Cotton. I didn't get the play on the word cotton until recently. That's how I pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce it. How clever, right? They gifted me two knits because they just launched their knit collection. One of them is this lovely oatmeal turtleneck. This has been my staple. I think you've seen this a lot probably. I just always have this on. And I think it looks mighty good with my sunglasses. This I got ages ago. I think it does just go well together. So you kind of wear it like super high, it will actually help you against the blizzardy winds. Uh, also, you can roll it down. So it's a mock neck length, which I love. Mock necks are my favorite. Um, but turtleneck has just been my vibe. It's just, I really like it. I think because the height of this matches with the height of this, I love it. Okay, let's see what we've got here. This is a pleasant surprise. Definitely tea, along with instructions. My mom loves tea, so we would definitely be experiencing it together. Should have brewed a pot of tea for this video, but I'm sort of racing against the sun, so. And I'm so excited. <sighs> it smells so good. My goodness, Japanese citrus, amazing. Burn time up to 30 hours. Electric lighter. Time for the lamp to go on. We're having a very nice and warm atmosphere today. I think I'm just celebrating the last couple weeks of autumn. It's my favorite season. That explains the leaves of gold. Next in line with what I wanted to chat about are just some shows. I really, really do enjoy a well-written show. I love watching performances. I think a part of me kind of yearns to act. Like I have this love for it, but yet I have the worst stage fright ever. So I don't know if I would ever realize that dream. Who knows, maybe when I'm like 60. So when I finish my tufted pieces, when I'm beating earrings or making hoops and stuff, I get to watch shows at the same time. Ratchet is based on the book and the movie adaptation, One Flew Over the Cuckoo Nest. Cuckoo's Nest. And I read that book in high school actually, so that's what intrigued me. And Nurse Ratchet in the novel is much older. Sarah Paulson portrays a much younger version of the nurse and alluding to how she became the cold and twisted woman she is. Beautiful, beautiful sets. Maybe not exactly historically accurate, but who cares? I love watching it. Also watched The Umbrella Academy. My sister was hounding me to watch that. So I finally took the time to, on my lunch, breaks and oh I finished the first season in a week I finished the second season in three days the umbrella Academy is a group of children who seem to kind of pop out of nowhere into the world by some magical force and seven of them were gathered together adopted by a billionaire so they were siblings and they all have their unique superpowers to basically save the world right that's kind of always like the and goal. My favorite part about that show is watching the siblings interact and the humor, the subtle humor and even the over humor. I love Klaus. I think in the first two episodes, I struggled to watch him struggle with drugs. I really grew to just enjoy anytime he was on screen. I really liked it. I talked to my friend Claire and she was saying how like, oh, I don't like this cop-out ending. I understand 
how people can criticize the plot of course i saw that it's based on a comic didn't research into that at all and i know nothing about the comic but i feel like that explains a lot about the plot of the show or maybe the characters and how they develop because it's adapted from a comic and i watched emily in paris it was entertaining for sure but like it's just what it is definitely does not hold a candle to Sex and the City whatsoever. It's not even trying to be Sex and the City, that's fine. But I love Lily Collins. Everybody on screen was basically eye candy for me. And I think that was the point, um, especially the actress who played Camille. Oh my God. Wow. I think I like Camille the most. Even, um, what's his face? What's that guy's name? Oh, Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, I, I know how it's super cringy and cheesy and I can't stand when they say tray this, tray that. So that's kind of why I delayed watching it because a couple of my friends were just telling me how it was hard to watch some of the blatant yeah, stereotypes and like the unrealistic portrayals and this and that. I also started watching The Crown because I saw the, se the second season has Princess Diana, maybe half the comments regarding Netflix is gonna tell me to watch The Queen's Gambit. I will. Don't worry. I just want the hype to settle down a little bit. I just want to absorb it for what it is. So I'll watch it when I'm really in the mood. And now that I've watched The Crown, I just, I just always want to say thank you. Thank you. What say you? I haven't seen enough of the show to say anything about it. I've, I'm only three or four episodes in, but it's cool. It's definitely a very serious show. I gravitate towards comedy so much. I think just because this year has been so hard. And lastly, I finished the movie Enola Holmes yesterday, I think. And I was kind of disappointed by it. What I will say is I never interrupt a film when I watch it. I have to devote myself and I there must be no talking. I paused it and went to bed and I watched it the next day because I feel like that's how not bored I was, but that's how not invested I was. It was very playful, entertaining, of course, but like I also didn't like how it just fe felt like Sherlock and Mycroft, like they had like one mustache in the door. Like, are you here? Are you not? Are you coming? Are you going? Like, what is this movie? But moving on, some updates, like I was talking about making jewelry and tufting while I work and watch Netflix. Um, so my store launched like a few days into the month and Oh, huh. it's like time was just, it just tumbled really fast after it just happened. I, why do I always feel the need to explain that I can't snap when I try to snap? It's embarrassing. <laughs> Although I work really hard, I felt exhausted. It, it feels like flow. I am genuinely enjoying my, the challenges, the highs and the lows, and just feeling really in the moment. And that's probably why you never see me on social media. I looked at my screen time this morning and I think it's like an hour a day. Also something you might have seen maybe in the background, just a quick glance, is the progress on my mom's space that we are rearranging. This is kind of what we've done in her scrapbook room. This is her studio. I made the hydrangeas dry flower in like an hour or so, put in the microwave. I mean, the first time. I love this makeover. I've told you several times, right? It's not my dream, but it's more like functional than before. Yeah. And we didn't even I... know that we would do this. It just happened yeah. really fast, yeah. right? We started with the shelves mm -hmm. and then everything went up really fast after that. And I moved around this. Oh know. yeah. Yeah. The shelf used to be under here, and I think in the future she'll put some storage, but the white Christmas tree will look really good there, so that's yeah. empty for now. Here I can put some of my, you know, work symbol. in progress, yeah. yeah. Just put over there. And this is a stamping oh, yeah. station. I have to talk about this. <laughs> I've been, I watch on YouTube how they store um, a punch. I watched that five years ago. Look at this. Literally, all my big punches out. And the small one, right now, I believe most of the company already discontinued. This part is more like my uh, office. I saw that you put this here. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? See the scene, right? But why didn't you put the picture with both of us? 
We don't have both. Oh yeah, we, we were on the couch. couch. Always tell people I have four cats. I wish they're yellow. So this is Lao Huang. I like it. Basically right now, it's almost 24 seven in this room, except, you know, going downstairs or by grocery shopping. Oh, some people asked, when did I start tufting? It was literally the day after I moved into this room and painted it and I just started it so fast and I vlogged the entire thing for my Patreon vlog. The trials and errors. I was just editing it today and thinking, so cringe. I saw some people do it in school before. We weren't taught it though. It's not too difficult to learn from home. And if you go to Tufting World, I believe that's like an online forum. This was something that I listed in my store, the Soul Flower. And speaking of that, I have to uh, get back on that because I sold out of almost everything in my shop, which is a good problem to have. I'm so grateful. I can't wait to get back to creating. But the reason why I brought up tufting in the first place is because when I tuft, the yarn gets everywhere and I'm really diligent about cleaning my room. And I haven't vacuumed in a week, so really after this, I got to clean up. But if you would like a quick video of me showing you my tufting process or something, let me know. I can make like a wee Wednesday. I'm excited and looking forward to my sister coming home. We found an arrangement in which she can like make it here and quarantine and make things safe. And as well as Luke has really been the one and only friend I've been seeing. You want to keep seeing anybody outside of your household very small and you can really trust the other party that they are being safe. Luke always comes over here and he's been helping around the house so much. He will be coming over actually for Christmas as well. So I'm super excited to have a nice time. Thanksgiving to me was a success because I made a nice casserole. The casserole was a fail last year. <laughs> and people at the table were like being nice and saying, it's okay, it's just, it's just that it's, it tastes a little bit like raw vegetables and maybe this is not my preferred thing and I'm just like, guys, it's not supposed to taste like this. I don't even want to get into this, but I started playing Overcooked because Luke brought his Switch over and I never play video games, but Luke and I have been playing Overcooked too. <laughs> I, I really like that game. <laughs> and guess who I am? My chef, the mouse. The last thing I want to talk about is just my favorite song. I have been in love with Big Thief for the last couple of months. I impulsively bought both Capacity and Masterpiece. I've talked about the individual songs before, but I just bought it all of a sudden from iTunes. The only albums I've ever purchased was Harry Styles and Fine Line. <laughs> But I recently just purchased Lust for Life because I'm realizing I'm such a creature of habit and all of these songs are like dear friends. So I just want to circulate a small number of songs. I love uh, Adrian's voice. Adrian, I believe. Adrian Linker, I think is the lead singer. Her vocals are freaking majestic. And Mary is my absolute favorite song ever. I can't wait to learn it completely. I want to do a cover of it. Give it a listen. She wrote it after she met her best friend, a friend who she felt is like a soulmate. And she wrote it in her grandparents' house after she graduated from Berklee College of Music, I believe. It was in the space that she spent a lot of time in as a child. There's corners of nostalgia all over the place. She was using that piano and wrote this very unique and beautiful song. It's about glimpses of memories and meeting that one person who kind of brings it out of you. That specialness of finding that friend or that soulmate. So Mary is that friend. When I experience the song, I guess it reminds me of moments in my childhood and it also moves me to know that somebody can love another so much. Um, to have a friendship so deep and dear and also makes me think of friends that I feel similarly about and when I heard Mary, when I heard the song pop up in the Umbrella Academy though, like I felt happy but also like, hmm, I don't really like it here. Like they only used a few seconds. What is the word? I just wanted to rave about it or just gush about the song to someone. I've talked about it with Ty <laughs> and maybe we'll make a cover together someday but I'll sing it in my own key. My very last update for you regarding the piano is that Maybe I've mentioned that grandma likes to hide in the garage or her bathroom to strum the ukulele. 
and she's taken on electric piano because my stepdad bought me one when I was in fifth grade and it's only 36 keys wide and my dear friend Luke he would basically have his electric piano on a semi-permanent loan so it's kind of here for the time being and he just needs it back someday because he used this to learn piano when he was six so it's like an heirloom I've been fooling around on it I've been learning the chords to happiness is a butterfly and not very good at it, but it feels cool to be able to sing with some background music for once. And my grandma has been learning with her headphones plugged in because she's scared to disturb us. And I think she's also really shy. So she doesn't know how to read music, nor do I. That's all I have for you this time. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you had a good time. I'm gonna head down and go to dinner and I'll see you very soon for the onset of the next few December weeklies. Love you, goodbye. Posing for the thumbnail. You are so photogenic, my love. <laughs>